Hej allihopa. På plats för nästa hör, då vill jag välkomna Nancy Esposito. I want to welcome Nancy. She's going to be taking a short taster about the sustainability in the fashion industry. And she's a professor uh, at Berkeley College in New York. And so uh, we have a couple of people listening. So please go ahead and introduce yourself and you're set to go. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me here today. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Nancy Ann Esposito. I am a professor in the fashion department at Berkeley College in New York City. I'm going to be talking today a little bit about um, sustainability, but I'm also going to talk about careers within the fashion industry, as well as the fashion program at Berkeley College and how we prepare you for those careers. So I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, great. So again, welcome. I'm Nancy Ann Esposito, and I'm located coming to you from New York City right in Manhattan today. So the first thing I just want to throw out to you to think about is what are some things that come to mind when we hear the word fashion? So I've thrown some images up here for you. So maybe you think about the film, The Devil Wears Prada, or maybe you think about streetwear, or maybe you think about the Met Gala. So I just want you to just formulate in your mind a few ideas of what comes to mind when you hear the word fashion. And then I want you to think about what are some words that come to mind when you hear the term sustainability? And then think, how do they apply to the fashion industry? So think about what you, what you associate with fashion, what you associate with sustainability, and how you can apply those to the fashion industry. So today I'm going to touch upon a couple of different, just some facts for you, some important information on sustainability in the fashion industry. Um, because it's such an important topic for anyone who's looking to work in the industry or study fashion. Um, you know, you have to have a, be able to have the ability to have a conversation around the different areas of it. And we touch upon it in all of our courses in the fashion program at Berkeley College. We even have an upper level elective that goes more in depth into the areas of sustainability and fashion. So some facts here for you. So on consumption and waste. So clothing production has roughly doubled since 2000. While people bought 60% more garments in 2014 than in 2000, they only kept the clothes for half as long. The equivalent of one garbage truck full of clothes is burned or dumped in a landfill every second. And in total, up to 85% of textiles go into landfills each year. So that tells us there's a lot of consumption. Also, right, a lot of this can't be recycled because of the different um, uh, fiber combinations and materials that are together. Textiles in the environment. So the fashion industry is responsible for 10% of humanity's carbon emissions and is the second largest consumer of water worldwide. It takes about 2,000 gallons of water to produce a pair of jeans. And textile dyeing is the world's second largest polluter of water. So there are people that are working towards, um, that are working with natural dyes, organic dyes, dyes from um, things like food scraps, things like this that are working towards change for this. How about workers' rights and transparency in the supply chain? This is so important. So what does it mean, transparency in the supply chain? Well, that means knowing from fiber to retail store the whole journey that your garment takes. So knowing, right, um, who makes the fiber, the materials, who sews it, who cuts it, right, having, and there are brands that are being totally transparent about all the steps in the process of this. Of course, there was the horrible Rana Plaza um, collapse in 2013. Um, which is really just tragic and um, significant and has brought about some change within the fashion industry in regards to really workers' rights and um, a living wage and safety, safety of where our clothes are being made, safety for the workers. Fast fashion. Zara puts out 24 collections per year, right? And fast fashion is really viewed as disposable and it encourages, right, consumption and can contribute to the waste problem. Although fast fashion is working towards certain areas and being more sustainable, right? It's still a continual problem in regards to overconsumption and waste. And how about the care of our garments? So once we own our garments, right, how do we take care of them, right? The life of our garments. Washing clothes releases 500,000 tons of microfibers into the ocean each year. 
in 2017 report um, estimated that 35% of all microplastics in the ocean came from the laundering. So really, how do we care for our textiles, our responsibility once we own these garments? So who's working towards change in this? Well, we have Adidas is working on, here's an example of circular fashion. So 100% recyclable performance running shoe. So something that is not just recycled, but can then be recycled again in its end life. And this is still a testing phase as they've created them and they've um, given them out to runners to, and now they're testing them to how to break it down and recycle and reuse it again. The real, real, right? Secondhand, so consignment, designer consignment, rent the runway, renting clothing so that you can refresh and revise your wardrobe, but without having to buy a lot of pieces, right? Thread up and Poshmark um, in the digital space. So a way of sharing, right? Social commerce, but with secondhand clothing. And the slow fashion movement. So talking about quality clothes, longer life. So repurpose, so make do and mend clothing that you have. So redesigning things that you have, upcycling, using garments to make new ones and multi-purpose garments, just like we have multi-purpose furniture within our apartments or houses that serve different purposes, the same can work for garments. Stella McCartney, of course, right, a lifelong vegetarian and really strong with vegan and environmentally friendly fabrics. Alabama Channon, um, all about community, right, and craft. Um, started in 2000 in Alabama about locally created garments um, and about education and bringing community together and working with sustainable fabrics as well. And fashion revolution. So if you're looking for more information or to get involved, their vision is a global fashion industry that conserves and restores the environment and values people over growth and profit. So I've listed their website there if you want to get involved and get a little bit more information. So what role does the consumer play and how can you as the consumer contribute to the sustainable goals? So just, I want you to just think about it for yourself, right? Being, being educated, maybe making better choices, right? Getting a little bit more information for yourself. So think about what role the consumer plays, right? We've talked about um, the, the industry, but what role does the consumer play in this and how can the consumer contribute to the sustainable goals? I wanna shift now into careers in fashion. So I've just touched upon sustainability a bit with some really important information because if you are gonna go into a career within the fashion industry, you do have to be able to have a conversation of that. So what does it mean to work in the business of fashion? The program that I teach in is fashion merchandising. So it's the business side. So what does that mean? If you get a degree in the business of fashion, what can you do? Well, buying, planning, and allocating. These are all of the analytical jobs. So if you're really great with numbers and working with Excel, visual merchandising and store planning. So these gorgeous holiday windows that we've just seen come up, designing the store layouts. Merchandising and retail management, if you're really interested in working hands-on with the customer right on the selling floor. Product development really works with all of the areas within the fashion industry. So textiles and color and trend forecasting and sales, developing that line to, um, for the consumer. Communication, social media, and public relations. Can you create a brand story, right? Um, designing and crafting a brand story and managing that social media, not just by putting content, but quality content. Right, and analytics. So looking at all of this information that um, retailers are gathering from us, right? Every time we put something in our shopping cart or we use our reward card or we use our app, right? Gathering all of this information and looking at it so that we have a better understanding of our consumer. So what type of skills are specific for fashion? Of course, you need retail math, trend knowledge and forecasting. Right, so having an understanding of the trends two, three, four years from now, but also being able to translate them to your target market, knowledge of textiles, um, garment, being able to create garment tech packs, writing fashion copy and content, right? Excellent communication skills, of course, verbal and written. It's an, right, it's a global industry being able to communicate with people all over the world. 
So I just want to look at the top skills here for employment in 2015 and in 2020. So let's take a look at 2020, right? On number six, we have the addition of emotional intelligence. But I also want to talk about two and three, critical thinking and creativity especially in this last year that we've had creativity and creative thinking, right? Being proactive, being able to come up with new ideas right on the spot, right? Is certainly a skill that employers are looking for. Required soft skills. This is actually one of the um, top soft skills are one of the biggest complaints from employers and recent grads that they feel that they're lacking. So what does that mean? That means emotional intelligence falls under here, organization, being able to work in a team. I always tell my students those group projects that you work on that maybe you don't like working in a group or not are super important because everybody works in teams today. Being able to have leadership, creative thinking, and problem solving. And of course, computer skills, the more the better today, of course, but within fashion, right? Um, Excel, being able to really understand formulas if you're gonna be working in the analytical jobs, Photoshop, Illustrator, right? Um, being able to create tech packs or invitations, social media, but building your social media, not just as I was saying, just throwing any content up there, but really being able to build that brand story on there. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the degrees that we offer at Berkeley College in the Fashion Merchandising and Management Program. So our programs are offered on-site and online. We have campuses in New York City, Westchester, and New Jersey. We also offer an associate as well as a bachelor's degree. So I'm a native New Yorker, so of course I'm partial to the uh, Midtown campus, but it's also, I tell students, even if you're going to take classes in New Jersey or Westchester, you should absolutely take some classes in the New York City campus. Why? Because New York City is a fashion capital, right? Our Midtown campus is located right in the heart of Manhattan. We're right off of Fifth Avenue. We're in walking distance to showrooms, to trim shops, to fabric shops, um, to corporate headquarters all of the flagship stores that are on Fifth Avenue. And in a, uh, in a moment, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the field trips that we do because that's one of my favorite things to do with my students in normal times is to go out in New York City and really learn from the industry. So we have our, I'm sorry, slide came. So we have our major core courses. So introduction to the fashion business. So this touches upon all of the different areas within the fashion industry. And students um, work on a project that is a designer research project. We also do a really great, interesting assignment that talks about um, current issues and current issues within the fashion industry and a really roundtable discussion on that. Fashion textiles and apparel for home, of course, right? The base of all fashion. Merchandise planning and buying. So learning all of those math calculations that are necessary. Product development is a capstone for the associate's degree. So where students do trend forecasting research, they select fabrics for their line, they create a line of five new styles, they talk about the quality control and ultimately selling the product. Omnichannel retail management. So retailers selling within multiple channels. So bricks and mortar, web, mobile, social commerce, but how do these all work together seamlessly to, for the consumer? Interactive fashion communications where students build a new brand and the senior capstone. So in this students work in teams to create either a new product or a new service. We also have a lot of different electives that we offer and we rotate them depending on the interests of the students and their career paths. So fashion forecasting, we do um, touch upon that within the product development course, but this course goes much more in depth into the different types of trend research. Sustainability, which as I just spoke with you about, product knowledge, which talks about accessories as well as home products, the great designers, which talks about their vision, visual merchandising, where students create uh, mock-up displays and learn color theory, fashion PR and events, where students learn how to plan a fashion show, an event, as well as create a brand and 
style aligned virtually. And then we also have what are called special topics. So luxury fashion was an example and fashion and film. So these are ones that we just do for one semester just to kind of keep it fun and interesting. And again, we're always creating new electives based on the needs of the industry, as well as the interests and the feedback that we hear from Nancy, I think we lost you. We can't hear you anymore. Hello? We lost your sound. Design program? I'm sorry? And now we can hear. For a while, you disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. How far back should I go? Should I go back? Uh, yeah, we'll go back one slide. One slide. Sorry. Okay. So these are some examples of my student projects. So I'm really proud of the work that my students have done. So these are some sketches and fabric selection that my students did for a product development project. This is an inspiration and a mood board. So again, we're a business program, not design, but we do encourage the creativity for the students. Of course, that is an element and an aspect of the program and the projects. Building a brand. This is an example of a student um, creating their own brand and building, right? We have the editorial for this, the logo, the social media that they build and making sure that it's consistent among all platforms. Social media design and development. So this is part of the uh, PR and events class as they're building their brand and planning their fashion show. One of the things that they also need to do is create the social media that is for it, make sure that it's consistent. Styling aligned virtually, so also part of the PR class, so an example of this. Some artwork and inspiration for the product development class. You can see there's color palettes there, the students' original artwork, so really creating these inspiration boards for their line. And this is this gorgeous um, designer inspiration mood board that one of my students did um, for fashion forecasting. So as I said, one of my favorite things to do are field trips. So depending on what the class is, I will research and come up with field trips that are relevant for that class. So I sometimes teach in the Westchester campus. So even in Westchester, um, I've done field trips. So this is an example of a field trip that we did to Tiffany. They recently redesigned, redesigned their stores. So we were able to go there and really learn all about that and the reasoning for that and how it affects the consumer and as well as the sales. And they brought out some diamonds as well for us to see, which was fun. <laughs> Um, for the PR and events planning class, we visited Gotham Hall and Edison Ballroom, two event planning spaces in New York City, um, where students got to really learn the ins and outs of what it costs and the detailing uh, that goes into planning a fashion event like a fashion show. And we also do on-campus events. So I created an event, Fashion Through the Decades. We had so much fun. It was... Um, a mini fashion presentation where students wore garments, either vintage or representative of specific decades. And they learned all about the key elements of those decades. And we created, and they also learned about event planning in the space because um, they planned the whole event um, that was, uh, that we held in the Midtown campus. And then we also held in the Midtown campus a holiday pop-up shop, which was in collaboration with the Brooklyn Fashion Incubator, which is a nonprofit organization um, that, helps mentor young emerging designers. So I wanna thank you so much for your time today. Um, I've really enjoyed speaking with you and sharing a little bit more about the careers in fashion as well as the program at Berkeley College. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and see if anyone has any questions for me at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you have my email. Please share it if any, and you'll find me on LinkedIn um, if you have any questions on anything at all. And I want to thank you so much for having me here today to be able to join you and share a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nancy. And, uh, you yeah, know, that was a very interesting uh, seminar for sure. <laughs>